Today we are going to talk about two main things. One, the ideal camera setup that is 100% reliable and that you can put together on your own on a budget. And two, I'm moving to Paris as an entrepreneur with half a backup plan. Stay tuned. So let's start with the camera. The camera, it's a 35 millimeter Minolta X700 and it has a 50 millimeter Rokor X F2. The coolest thing about these is they're not extremely expensive. It's like not really a popular camera, but they're widely available if you want to pick one up and if it breaks. If you've seen my past videos, you can see that I did go through a break, so I do have two sets of uh, extra capacitors and a soldering iron that I'm going to bring just in case it does fail. I just recently got this ball hitch for my tripod, which is really nice because I can just line things up and I can easily move this around and it's not extremely bulky. Like the tripod I had before had this giant like handle on it and it was just a pain to work with and to fold up. So this is very compact. I wear glasses so this eyepiece is really nice so that I can get really close to the viewfinder and not have any light glaring in, you know, on my glasses and in my eyes. And this camera strap I made, so if you want one, message me and I'll hand make you one. This is just old climbing rope and I have like a piece of metal wire that I bent. Let's move on to flash. So I have this TT560 speed light that it's a reliable flash and it's just a single point so it can work with any camera which is really nice I know it's not gonna break unlike my original PX 360 auto or whatever it's called that I have that matches this camera that is completely unreliable it's amazing because I can dial in all of the settings it has a dial on it that I can change based off the focal length the exact flash and do full manual flash but there's never enough time, especially with street photography, to set all that up. So I just need a flash. I could just, this has a dial on it. You press up and you can press down and you could just basically guess the right flash setting. And I haven't really tested this out just on the camera. So I don't know if the single point is just going to work properly. I haven't tested it because I still have film in this camera. I guess I should probably test it. But I have a flash sync cable. So this cable here has a um, slave on it or whatever it's called. Where basically whenever this thing senses a flash, this flash also goes off. But if I take this off, I have this piece that can actually go into the, um, the flash chute. The coolest thing about this flash is I can really easily bounce this guy around i would like to have everything be like accurate and to date with this setup but it's just not going to be like that it's fine this is reliable okay moving on this is the bag that i have that i'm holding everything in and it's really nice because it's small and it's compact and i can walk around with it but in here i have obviously my camera which these little pieces, these rubber pieces just fold away and makes it a little bit more compact, but not really. My battery charger for my Nikon. I have another shutter release cable that is for my backup kit, but I also just have it in here because it's really long and it's good for self portraits in the studio. Obviously that flash sync cable that I already showed you before. I have an Allen key for this little piece in the tripod that could potentially get loose. So that's probably really good to have. And then I have just another lens flare here in case I don't want to use the other one or if I get another lens. This is for 55 millimeter lenses or 55 millimeter threads. This is a Shinar. I don't know if I'm saying that right. 80 to 205. It's a f4.5, which is a nice telephoto with a little extendable lens flare, blah, blah, blah. Good to have a telephoto. And this one's MD. I have all of this uh, slide film 
and I have Velvia, Provia, and a bunch of expired film that I got from a local camera store that I have no clue how it's going to turn out yet because I don't have E6 chemicals and most of the people I've talked to around my current area don't develop E6 so maybe I'll get the chemicals and do it on my own but I'll probably just find a developer there in Paris and just get them all developed and see how they come out. I also have in here a tape measure which is really nice to have if you're doing self portraits or if you're doing any other studio work with a manual camera that you really want to nail the focus. Um, and if you don't have a camera that has like one of those split ring focus things that you can make sure that the focus is correct, that you're not just eyeballing it, this you know that the focus will be on. And it also low key makes the setup a lot easier, especially for self or for um, um, self portraits. And then also in here, I have my Auto 320X for the Minolta. This is the one that I was talking about before that has all the settings that I can really dial in manually. Again, it's not super reliable and uh, it's bulky and you know, the other one works really nice so I'm going to continue using that one. And then I also have in here a shutter release cable, which if any of you have this shutter release cable and lost the top to it, I literally got an old coat button and like screwed this leather coat button onto here and it's like, it gives it a nice touch. but. Whoever designed this thing, I know it's a cheap one, that little piece just screws off and gets lost. Like, I can't tell you many, how many times I dropped it, found it, but now it's gone. I have no clue where it's at. And here's a tripod that I have. It's not the most compact tripod, but it gets the job done. I'm going to get all new gear and a medium format camera. And this is just my, like I said, budget kit. And that's pretty much it. For the main kit, I also have a backup camera that I'll just briefly mention. This is the Nikon N6006. You've uh, heard me talk about this before. This has a 75 to 300 millimeter telephoto on it, and it's a quandary. It's not the greatest setup, but you know, it's the cool thing is that like it has a automatic motor drive, so I could just I could just rapid fire this thing. It's a nice camera to have because I don't need a hot shoot flash and I could just take it and I could just shoot it. It's got a telephoto and it's good for portraits. And it also has autofocus, which is kind of nice to have on a um, film camera, even though I've been using, you know, not autofocus, which the autofocus isn't the greatest, but whatever, moving on. Now that we covered the ideal camera bag setup, I'd like to segue into the next episode in the next few episodes where I'm moving to Paris on a whim as an entrepreneur. I plan to make it there as an entrepreneur, so I'm selling prints, taking photo shoots, real estate photography, a whole lot of networking, and here and there working on a side startup. What I want y'all to take away from this video is that one, if you don't have a well-established collection of gear like all of those ass-kicking film photographers with 16 medium format cameras, you can still be a film photographer if you'd like, even though film photography and the hoarding and collecting sort of part of it is expensive. It can still be done on a budget for anybody who wanted to know that. Also, if you want to go anywhere, you can. Just go. What do you have to lose? Like, come on. Not to get deep, but we're all just human beings on a rock in the middle of nowhere. So, might as well. I already mentioned that I had half a plan B, and by half a plan B, I mean I thought about it, but time's a wasting. Let's go. So definitely check out the next video where I'm leaving this anti-inspirational land of rolling shithills. And don't forget to subscribe slash all that jazz for more film photography related content. And soon, Paris and fashion photography and portrait photography and studio photography and a bunch of other things, but yeah, stay tuned.